G'day everyone and welcome to the GrandCorp Junee webinar. I'm Izzy Hutchinson, the Grower Services Manager for our Southern Region. I will be your host for this webinar this morning, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings at Junee, Mara, Coolaman, Grongrong, Narandra and Colliambly sites. 2020 has certainly been a big year for everyone with some, with some big challenges to overcome. One positive has been the return of some decent rainfall across the east coast of Australia. While it's an exciting time for the industry, there is also a lot riding on this crop and we are not underestimating the importance of getting this crop off to generate some badly needed cash flow for our rural communities. No doubt some topics discussed this morning will lead to further questions. You may have noticed that this session is equipped with a chat feature. I encourage you to put forward any questions that you may have at any time and we will endeavour to answer them all as we go. If we don't get to your question at the end of the webinar, then you can expect a call from an appropriate GrainCorp team member to discuss your, your question further. Given it's a busy time of the year, I will aim to wrap up within the hour. So please understand that we may not be able to drill down into every detail across every site for this webinar. To kick off our presentation this morning, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our local site managers. Hi everyone, Jeremy Keller, the site manager at Gen A Sub. Uh, just want to say we're all feeling pretty positive about the upcoming harvest. Uh, fingers crossed everyone gets it across the line this year. Uh, it's been a, a few trying years, but yeah, forecast is looking great. Um, segregation wise, we'll be taking obviously canola, uh, barley and wheat. Usual wheat seeds, barley-wise, we'll be taking LA1 and bar one. Um, operationally, we'll be looking at running two shifts this year. Um, hours roughly 7 till 11 at night, but obviously we'll have some flexibility there to um, accommodate everyone. Um, any issues prior to harvest or during harvest, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Um, or if you're free and driving past, please, uh, please drop in, say hello. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it, and we'll see you all in. Thanks. Good morning, I'm Alana Hartwig. I've just been appointed to the role of site supervisor at Coolerman. We'll be taking all commodities this year, wheat in all grades in the bunkers, and spiders and bar one barley. Uh, canola will be in the D150. All of our site staff have been hired, and we will be doing extended shifts. I'm really looking forward to starting my new role and meeting all the growers in the area and having a really good harvest. Um, for this upcoming harvest, we're looking forward to seeing all the growers here. It should be a good harvest. Um, we're looking at, we've got a new grower machine for the front bucket and it, it'll be a valued asset for us. Our seeds for this year will be wheat, we'll be taking all grades of wheat. Our barley will be bar uh, one and latrobe for malt. Uh, canola, we'll be taking canola as well. Um, we'll be doing two shifts this year. So, and yeah, we just look forward to seeing all the growers that come harvest. And if you have any worries, just give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, um, I'm Richard Dunn, the site manager for Narendra. Um, just want to have a quick brief over what's happening in Narendra's harvest. Um, we'll be taking wheat and canola. Um, ours will probably be similar to 2016 when we yeah, we'll be working two shifts, so it'll be early start, late finish, snow sites. Um, looking forward to the, to the harvest, it's going to be a big one. And if you have any uh, inquiries, fine, ring me anytime, any day. And yeah, it's good. Can't wait to start. Hopefully that provides you with an insight into who you'll see this coming harvest. It's great to see a few familiar faces. I now want to take a moment to speak to Sean Barker, our General Manager of Customer and Commercial. Good morning, Sean, and thanks for joining us this morning. Can you give us an overview as to what GrainCorp has been up to in the last 12 months to ensure that we're ready to receive this crop? Thanks, Izzy, and it's a pleasure to be here at the Juno meeting uh, this morning. As you've mentioned, it's really pleasing to see uh, the better conditions than we've had probably the last two or three years across our network. I was lucky enough to be out in the Juno cluster area only three weeks ago, so fingers crossed for some uh, good weather uh, to see these crop potential through to the end. Um, as you mentioned, um, at Grain Corp, it's been a busy 12 months. 
Back in March, we successfully demerged from our malt um, business, so that's the United Malt Group. They now trade on the ASX as a separate listed company uh, in their own right. With that demerger, uh, that did see Robert Spurway start as CEO. Um, Robert started about four days before the full pandemic hit, so he's been busy trying to get across the business uh, as best he can uh, in these times. And with that, the merger uh, for Grain Corp, we come out with basically zero core debt. And what that means for our growers is, one, it allows us to continue to be a strong buyer of grain in our network, but two, continue the appropriate investments in our supply chains um, that we've been making for the last five years. Um, also, uh, with the large plant of crop that we did see back in March, all the way from our chairman, Peter Richards, to Robert, our CEO, all the way down to our ground staff, we've had a focus on harvest readiness. Um, we've really focused in on uh, our labour workforce and our machinery. And um, we have over 3,000 casual roles to fill. And it's not only filling them, it's making sure that we induct people safely, uh, that we're right to go for this harvest and see our sites operate efficiently. Just a call out to all growers out there, if you have new staff coming onto your operations this year, please do just take that time to ensure they're inducted well to, for a safe harvest for all. On the machinery front, we have over 21 new stackers coming into the network this year, um, which we're pleased of. Uh, lots of tarps coming in and, and dogs to assist with those stackers. So we're in a really, really good spot as we go into harvest. I'm really proud of the team, Izzy, in our planning this year. Uh, we've had COVID thrown at us a number of times, so we've had to adapt those plans. Um, our teams on the ground have done an amazing job, but that's made some changes to how the site may work. Uh, Craig, Warwick, Gary and Harry and the team will run through a few more of those changes in details. But I just want growers to know we've considered the full site-to-site -site experience as we try to um, minimise the impact on growers on that front. Our digital solutions at Fastway and Crop Connect will play a pivotal role uh, in the site services this year. So in the past where they've been able to provide lots of uh, features like crop demiser and our fast payment terms, we're pretty pleased to see it play a role in turning our site. So hopefully be a little more efficient this harvest as we move to a more contacted or site. Uh, just reiterating your comments, uh, Izzy, we want to wish everyone a safe harvest um, coming forward. Um, we're ready uh, here at Grain Corp. Um, and if there's any questions throughout this session, please use that chat function overall. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks, Sean. There's definitely been plenty happening around the, around the business over the past 12 months, and we'll do a deep dive into a couple of those things that you've mentioned there. But firstly, I just want to throw a question up to you, and that's we've done quite a few of these webinars across the East Coast, and a pretty common question we're getting from growers is why is Grain Corp more competitive with grower pricing this year than we have been with previous years? Oh, um, thanks, Izzy. Good questions and, uh, yes, yeah, something that has come up. I don't think it's any one thing, um, Izzy, when you, when you pull it apart and look at that. Um, certainly, I think the focus on our supply chains for the last five years in reducing costs um, whether that was project regeneration that's gone into the future network. We really are seeing the benefits now come through in those rail rates and, and the efficiencies we're getting out of the supply chain. So that, that's a really good thing. I think we've made a number of changes in the last few years, just how we operate as a business with our people and just aligning things. Um, and as mentioned there before, just our focus on being ready for harvest um, after a few years of importing grain, and we've been able to align things and um, have everyone pointed in the right direction a little bit earlier than we probably have in the past. Also, going back to an export year, um, we certainly, you know, do, uh, that is our value proposition to growers in bringing those strong export pricing back to the site. Um, and we're pretty excited to be doing that again this year. Yeah, great. Thanks, Sean. We've actually had a question come in from the audience, and this has come from Eloise. You have been with Grain Corp for several years now. What is it that excites you about our business? I've been with Grain Corp 13 years, Izzy, so uh, it's a lot excites me at Grain Corp. But I, I think for Grain Corp and just our industry overall, it's definitely the people. Um, for me, getting to interact with, with a number of people across our business, but not only our business, inside our communities as well. Um, inside Grain Corp, we, we have a... Uh, a platform called Workplace, 
nothing excites me more than seeing posts on there of, of our staff out with farmers in crops, um, just doing what they're doing day to day overall. So it's definitely our people and seeing them in our community. Um, I, I think that's uh, for all of us in our industry. Yeah, I agree, Sean. That's probably one thing that really excites me just generally about the ag industry is, is the people and the people that we interact with, particularly in the grower services team. So that's great. Now, for the remainder of this session, we're doing a Q&A uh, type panel program. And we've got four of our talented staff members on board to answer any of your questions. I encourage you to put forward any questions into the chat section and we will endeavour to cover them all off. The panel this morning includes Craig Cochran, our Senior Manager of Supply Chain for the South, Warwick Smith, our Regional Ops Manager for Southern, Gary Harpley, our Area Manager for Junee, and Harry Lee, our Grain Marketer for Junee and Boree Creek Clusters. So I'll kick off here with a question that I'll throw across to Gary. We've heard from our site managers there, Gary. Can you just give us a recap of what sites in the area will store malt and canola this coming harvest? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. Uh, yeah, we'll be taking barley at uh, Grongrong. We'll be taking LA1, Bar1 and Canola at Grongrong. Uh, with the Canola at Grongrong, we'll have two drop-off points. We're using both the permanent storage to put Canola in, so that should uh, be a good turnaround. Uh, we've got SP1 at Coolerman with Bar1 and Canola. June we will be taking Canola, LA1 and Bar1. Um, and I can just remind the growers, just uh, the PPE or when they're on site, that's a hat, glasses, safety boots and a high vest um, shirt or vest if they could, please. Very good. Thanks for that, Gary. I've had a, another question come in from the audience. And the question is, there is a lot of media around staff and labour due to COVID. How is Grain Corp going with recruiting staff for this harvest? I think I'll throw this across to Warwick. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. And yeah, look, a good question. It certainly had um, there been a lot of media around, uh, you know, staff related type matters with the COVID situation. But uh, look, Grain Corp's tracking really, really well. Um, Sean obviously mentioned at the start uh, that, uh, you know, we've been looking for around just over 3,000 harvest casuals to help with, and that's the entire network. Um, up to date, we've had well over 5,500 applications uh, for harvest uh, positions, so that's been fantastic. So we're sorting through them and have been for quite some time. But uh, down to a more of a regional base, we're situated in a really, really strong position in southern New South Wales. We still have some little gaps here and there in some parts of the region, looking for some more labourers just to help out with double shifts. But all in all, uh, we're tracking at about 90%. Um, and uh, we're, we're very confident come harvest time that we'll have enough people to provide the service that's required to our growers. So thanks, Izzy. Thanks, Woz. And thanks very much for that question, Alex. It's a really good one. And that leads us into what's actually happening with harvest recruitment in our local area. So, Gary, can you give us an update of what's happening around June, please? Yeah, it went pretty well uh, covered. Um, about 85% um, full with, like, with workers. Probably a little bit short on a few labourers, as Warren mentioned here and there. But as a whole, I think by harvest will be 100% with staff. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Gary. So if anyone online knows of anyone that might be suitable for a job throughout harvest at, at Grain Corp at your local site, please jump onto our website, graincorp.com.au, and submit your application and we can we can go from there. I now go across to Craig. Sean mentioned that we had some new gear coming into our fleet. I'll get an update of that and a few more details on that gear and equipment that's been moving around from Craig. Thanks, Izzy. Uh, this crop certainly does have enormous potential, um, and we started our planning for it way back in March, far earlier than uh, ordinary that we do it. Um, so I think that we're certainly ready for it. But when you throw a, a uh, COVID pandemic in on top of what our usual harvest challenges are, uh, it certainly has been a unique planning season for us. Um, but I think that being said, our plans are in place um, and we've got multiple contingency plans also there to back it up. Um, supporting these plans, our business has spent in excess of $10 million in the last six months procuring new tarps, uh, 21 additional stackers that Sean mentioned, uh, new 400 tonne an hour drive over hoppers to, to uh, add that value to those stackers. 
Um, and when we look at our stacker plan, uh, movements are already happening now on the East Coast, moving from Queensland down into southern New South Wales. So uh, all in all, Izzy, we are very confident that we are ready to receive this potentially massive crop in the South. Perfect. Thanks, Craig. We'll now do a bit of a deep dive into what our COVID plan is for harvest and how we plan to keep yourselves, your community and our staff safe. So I'll throw across to, to Woz to give us an update of our COVID plan. Yeah, look, thanks, Izzy. Obviously, yeah, um, COVID certainly uh, something that we've all been dealing with since about March in Australia. And, um, yeah, obviously, Growing Corp's no different to that. So basically, way back then, um, I mean, we've been dealing with the outload process and, you know, importing of grain uh, all year uh, and, and doing it in a contactless way. So basically, obviously, we've been developing our plan for this harvest from a long way back. Um, so basically, there's a revised delivery process across our East Coast network um, has been developed to reduce human contact, allowing almost all delivery functions to be contact free while maintaining our commitment to quality service. Grain Corp's advanced contact free technology platforms such as Fastway for grain sampling and receivables and Crop Connect for digital transaction are central to the revised plan, as are the changes to existing practices. So there's four key practices or four key points that we're working towards. So the first one is minimising movement of all Grain Corp staff and customers at all times during uh, while they're at the site. So this includes, but not limited to, no access inside our sample stands and weigh bridges. We're particularly aiming to minimise movement of truck drivers on our sites. Social distancing and hygiene measures will be enforced as standard practices at all sites. Along with all drivers slash growers uh, are required to scan in via a QR code at the sample stand and then again when the truck tears off at the Weybridge. We also will have obviously manual forms for signing in as well if people are not as tech savvy or mightn't have you know digital phones sort of set up as well so that, that'll be there as well. The second point is the use of our updated delivery advice form so this is really key to the making everything work smoothly at harvest I believe so our updated delivery advice form will assist uh, with reducing the contact between Grain Corp staff and our growers and drivers. Also, this process will increase the efficiencies of the sample stand. The delivery advice for, uh, form must be used for every delivered load to the site and every sample to be tested. Samples will need to be provided to Grain Corp in a Ziploc bag. Look, we're requiring at least sort of a kilo and a half to two kilos of grain in these, in these Ziploc bags with the uh, delivery advice in it as well. Um, and basically you'll leave it at the site and we'll be in contact with you via phone or text message with your results. Uh, please note the delivery advice will be not returned after use. So it's a, it's a new one for every time. The third point, uh, no option to select cash or transfer grain to contract uh, at sample stands or Weybridge. So all deliveries will be placed into warehousing and transferred via Crop Connect for the, um, or the Grail Hotline. Uh, number you can call the transfer grain as well, uh, 1800 grains. We'll still collect NGR, paddock details, treatment status, and vendor decks at, at the sample stand, uh, and all Weybridge and uh, all Weybridge and, and maintain active live prices at the site as well. Uh, and the fourth and final point is no transfer of clipboards around the site with drivers. So basically, any paperwork required will not be handed back or signed. Uh, the size of the text on the paperwork, so your receivable docket has been enlarged, so obviously our staff can see it quite easily from the cab of the truck um, and, uh, you know, to avoid any issues in that space. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks, Woz. We might just take a moment just to have a look at the flow chart there, just so that growers can get a visual of how things have changed around the site and just whereabouts we have a look at those QR codes and and how that works, if that's okay, Was if you can just cover that off. Yeah, sure can, Izzy. So obviously you can see the flow chart there. Look, a lot of hasn't changed. Obviously we're just removing the human contact side of things. So basically as normal, you're, you're going to drive into the site and pull up along the sample stand. Uh, the sample stand will obviously probe the truck um, as you're going past. Obviously there's varying different ways. You can, we were hoping you've got your delivery advice already pre-populated and, and filled out. Um, and obviously put it in the bucket or obviously some clips and that, which we have at some sample stands where the sample stand can um, grab it and they can start the process straight away while then you pull your truck forward. Obviously hop out of your truck, come back to the sample stand um, and obviously we would like you to sign in or obviously uh, do the QR code 
Um, and whether it's waiting at the bottom of the stairs or at the top of the stairs, uh, obviously there'll be varying different ways we do things, just depending, we all sample stands aren't the same, we know that. Um, but then obviously, yeah, our friendly staff will come back and obviously provide you with um, the receivable docket once it's completed, and then obviously you'll move on to the Weybridge. Um, you can see in the flow chart there, obviously, yeah, the font has increased for the storage code and the date and the truck rego, these types of things. Uh, so it's very easy for the Weybridge uh, operator to see that. So you only have to hang that out the window um, and they can see that and they can process the docket. I'll give you the all clear to proceed on uh, to the required storage that you need to go to. Same again, you pull up at the storage, uh, the, the hopper attendant can obviously see it very clearly that you're in the right spot or if you're not, they can redirect you. Um, obviously, they'll tip you off. Uh, you come back around to tear off and obviously we want you to uh, rescan again uh, that you've left the site. Um, as well on the QR code or sign back out again. So the, basically that's the process, Izzy. Um, yeah, just trying to minimise that contact. Although we do know the risk is probably very minimal. At the end of the day, I don't think anyone wants um, to you know, increase the risk or the last thing we need is you know, for a site to be shut down any period of time during a very big harvest. So we're hoping everyone can just adhere to it and, um, yeah, just, just uh, make it all work for everyone. I think it should work quite seamlessly. Very good. Thanks, Was, And I think some of these changes may actually speed things up a little bit. Now, we've had a couple of questions come in from the audience here, Was, so we'll just cover these off before we move on. The first one's come from Bert. You mentioned that you've made changes to the grower delivery ticket. What changes have been made here and why? Um, yeah, so basically the changes have been made, obviously, in regards to the COVID situation, but basically it's um, to reduce the contact, as I said, but yeah, as you mentioned just there before, Izzy, it's really to speed things up as well. Um, if that information is all filled out um, on arrival, we do have issues from time to time where it's, you know we mo we're not sure of a variety or the truck driver is not aware of something. So we're hoping that all that information speeds things up. Um, yeah, the delivery bus really hasn't changed too much. It's obviously got the growers' details, uh, their trading name, their NGR, uh, what commodity they got, uh, the truck rego. Uh, has it you know, anything to do with that, that type of detail that we need to process uh, that load. So, um, yeah, I encourage everyone to uh, obviously access, uh, you can access these online uh, if you want on our grains website and print them off and pre-populate uh, the, the delivery advice. We do have them at site as well. We will have them at site. It's clearly not going to turn anyone away because they haven't got one, but we would be encouraging uh, everyone to sort of be proactive in this space um, and, yeah, please pre-populate as much as you can on the form before coming in uh, so it's a, a more seamless process. Make it easier on your truck driver um, and make it seamless all the way through. Uh, if that uh, could be done, that would be greatly appreciated. But all in all, um, if you need any more assistance or you want to know where these things are, please get in contact with, um, yeah, our Grail Services team on 1800 Grains. Perfect. Thanks, Was. I think that probably covers off both Bert and Janet's question. So Janet's question here is, as you outlined, girls are required to provide a delivery advice form when delivering. Can you please explain this and where do you get it from? It's the question there, I think, was, given that you've just explained what it is, um, we'll have a quick look at that delivery advice um, form. But where, where do growers actually get that form from? Where can they find it? Yeah, look, as uh, just mentioned, it is on our website, on the Growing Corp website. You can go and, um, yeah, there's a, there's a, and you can actually go in and pre-populate on it, print them off and have them ready. Um, we will have some at site as well, as I mentioned before. So, you know, if people obviously aren't aware of what's going on, um, yeah, we're certainly not going to turn anyone away. We'll be able to give them a few and hopefully they can uh, then come back and uh, for the next load be, uh, you know, sorted out. Um, but, yeah, obviously call our grower. Um, uh, yeah, 1800 Grains number as well, which is a friendly team in Wagga will certainly help them as well uh, to, to send out uh, the PDF if they require it. Um, and obviously, yeah, so it's all, uh, I think emails have been sent out to is in, in previous times, uh, you know, so letting people know as well that that's uh, the delivery advice we're going to require going forward. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Was. There's plenty, there's definitely plenty of ways that growers can get that form. I'll throw across to Craig just to give us a bit of an understanding of the question that's on that advice form in regards to in-crop glyphosate for barley and durum treatment. 
Thanks, Izzy. Um, look, it's very important that we know exactly what your crops have been treated with before we receive them. Uh, for instance, glyphosate is not approved for use in barley in Australia. Um, and as such, any of the barley crops that have had glyphosate treatments, we can only receive them as bar one. Um, and also when we're using IMI chemicals, um, it can potentially impact end users both domestically and internationally, for instance, in uh, Durham. So it's vital that you accurately declare what, if any, treatments have been applied to your crop. Uh, and then we'll receive it accordingly. Very good. Thanks, Craig. Um, Gary, I'm really interested to understand, with COVID, has the process of how growers request a retest changed? Uh, yeah, well, basically the same. It, it, we can take and do the retest straight out of the bucket. So if they want to get a retest, they just tell the samplers they want a retest. We test it out of the bucket, and if they're not, if they don't want it out of the bucket, they can take the truck to the end of the line and process forward and get it done that way as well. But that's how we do a retest. Perfect. Thanks, Gary. And was touched on it, but can you just give us an update of how grower samples? will actually get processed through the sites and where, where growers will leave their samples to get tested if we're going contactless. Yeah, like I said, what Warwick mentioned. Um, so they will bring the Ziploc bag in with the grain in, with their delivery advice in there. We'll um, do it as soon as we possibly can and text or phone the grower straight away. Um, they can wait in their car outside or whatever they want to do, but we'll be um, getting it done as quick as we can so they can get the headers moving. Yeah, perfect. And just remember, if you've got any questions that come to mind throughout the session, please utilise that chat feature and we'll get, them, we'll get them to the experts and they can answer them. We do actually have another question come in here for, from Shane. Um, if we're going contactless, how do growers sell their grain on site? I think I'll throw this one to Harry. Good morning, everyone. Um, as part of the COVID plan, all the grain's going to be warehoused. So as poor Shane asked, you can use the Crop Connect platform to transact your grain, sell on cash or transfer to con contract. There's lots of other um, options or uses with Crop Connect. You can see your grain being delivered. Uh, you can get quality reports as it's been delivered. You can see where the truck is on site. It also provides accounting products like RCTIs and delivery notices. Uh, I'd suggest that if you have time that you make sure that you've got the app uploaded, updated and familiarise yourself with the app before harvest. It's your one-stop shop. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. So you mentioned that everything has to go into warehouse or will automatically go to warehouse this harvest. Can you just give me an understanding of what costs and other benefits are involved in warehousing grain at Grain Corp? Thanks, Izzy. Um, during the grace period, there's no warehousing cost. That grace period is the month of delivery plus two months after that. Another benefit for uh, Crop Connect is Croptimizer, which gives you the possibility of upgrading a load if it's just below the quality that you have been delivering. Delivering, so you need there's some requirements for that day. You need to have uh, some loads that have been delivered in the upper quality, so equity, and you also need the stack to be performing well, and you also need to have like a decent amount of grain in that stock position. Um, you, with that, there are text messages sent out several times a week indicating if you have the opportunity to optimise, you can also call the 1800 grains number. Thanks for that, Harry. We've had another question come in from the audience. The question is from Ollie. It sounds like the sites are ready to receive the grain this harvest. Is the business also ready for the export tasks across the East Coast? I think Craig would be best positioned to answer this one. Uh, definitely. Um, Izzy, we're very lucky in that our export STEM has been very well supported by the industry. Um, I was lucky enough to be down in Port Kembla last week and the teams down there are very excited about the upcoming uh, shipping stem. 
Um, I guess when you think about it, for the last two years, we've reversed the supply chain. They've been unloading boats um, and loading trucks out or trains. Uh, for them, they really are excited to have the trains rolling back in and loading the vessels. Uh, they've been very, very busy uh, down there giving the uh, shiploaders a birthday. They've been cleaning our flow paths and our silos in readiness for the shipping season. Uh, and similar to upcountry, we've been busy adding extra staff and training them up uh, to bolster the team to help handle the busy upcoming export program. So, yeah, they're very excited. Very good. Thanks, Craig. Now, Harry, with the export year planned, what options do growers have for delivery direct into port post-harvest? Izzy, if you have to store grain on farm due to harvest logistics, we do have a couple of options delivering after harvest. We'll have the option to deliver direct to port, either Geelong or Port Kangalbar after harvest, and also some up to some particular upcountry sites. Very good. Thanks, Harry. Now, we've got a couple of audience questions that we'll go through. So this one's coming from David, and I think I'll throw it across to Craig. So David has asked here, Craig, why the need for QR codes when the details of the truck the truck and the driver are on the receivable slip, time in and out are also on the slip when you receive your documents. Must we, must we code needed to print your name and number except for the New South Wales Service 1? So are you able to give an update as to why we're utilising that QR code on our sites there, Craig? Uh, look, it's a, it's a system that we've actually implemented all the way across the East Coast, um, and it's very, very similar to what you do when you go into restaurants, etc. cetera, now. Um, and it really does allow us, if there is an incident, we really hope that there isn't, uh, it allows us to be able to uh, efficiently track where those people have been when our system is not set up for that. So uh, that's why we've gone with the QR code. Very good. Thanks, Craig. And thanks for that question, David. We've got one here from Deborah as well. Will trucks still pre will trucks still be provided with delivery tickets? And I think Was is in the best position to answer that one. Yeah, good question, Deborah. Yeah, of course you will. Like oh, as when the truck tears off, um, obviously, yeah, dockets will be printed off. Uh, I believe there'll be two dockets, so one for the the driver and one for the grower uh, will still be printed off. Um, you, you don't need to. Obviously, everything's in Crop Connect if you want to go down that path. But, yes, dockets will still be printed off. Um, won't be signing them, of course, or anything like that, but we'll be handing them to the truck driver so there's a record. So, yeah, no, no change there either. Perfect. Thanks for that question, Deborah. We've got one here from Kendra. Will, is there a sample submission form on the Grain Court website? I'll throw this to Woz, and I'm assuming that that's referring to the grower delivery advice form. Yeah, Kendra, um, there is. Uh, yeah, just on the Grain Court website, uh, there is our yeah delivery new delivery advice uh, form available there for you to print off, and as I said, pre-populate as much information as you as you want on the docket. Obviously, NGR details and trading names and things like that is something that's probably not going to change too much. So probably makes sense to pre-populate as much as you can so that it's easier on the truck driver. But it is on our web page. If you do have issues finding it, um, yeah, please contact our grow services team on 1800 Grains. Um, yeah, and they'll certainly either send you out at the form or uh, direct you in the right uh, to help you navigate through the website if that's, uh, if that's fine. Perfect. Thanks, Woz, and thanks, Kendra, for that question. We've now got another one come in from Jenny. Croptimizer, can we do it through the app rather than phoning in? And I'll throw this one to Harry. Uh, thanks, Izzy. With Croptimizer, you do have to call the 1800 Grains phone number with Grower Services. Perfect. Thanks again, Jenny. And then we've also got one from Terry, which I'll throw to Harry. I'm interested to understand more about the canola sustainability changes and what's happening in that space. Thanks, Izzy. This year, Seven of the major exporters and NGR have come together to form Sustainable Grain Australia. And it just means that with the sustainability registration for canola to go to the EU, you can do it at one place. So it's pretty uh, important this year, seeing the majority of canola that's been expected to export from Australia is expected to go to the EU. So um, if you haven't done so, please give NGR a call and um, they'll run you through all the details of filling out the form and if appropriate, you can register with them. Thank you. Perfect. 
Thanks, Terry. Now, keep these questions coming because they're, they're great. Um, Harry, we've heard the 1800 grains number get mentioned several times this morning. I'm just wondering if you can give us an update of who is the 1800 number grains and where they're located and some of the services that they provide. Izzy, 1800 grains is a grower services centre. It's based here just in Wagga, so it's local. They've had three permanent staff with over 18 months' experience and we're putting on casuals gearing up for the large harvest, expected to be over 20, 20 casuals come harvest time. Um, we've already got nine casuals on now, and they can help with all your questions to do with paperwork, RCTIs, tickets, loads, payments, transferring onto contracts, transferring onto cash, crop demiser, as we've already discussed. Um, the only thing they really don't cover is your real operational questions, which you can call your site manager. So, but for everything else, call 1800 Grains. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Harry. We've covered off a large array of topics in a very short space of time. So, I'm going to throw across to Craig just to get his key messages that he's taken Sorry, from this session. Could you say it again, please? Um, the key messages that I've taken from this session are look, the major change coming this year is our COVID plan, in that our sites will be as contactless as possible. Um, delivery advice forms are required for grower samples and also at delivery, um, and all grain will be automatically placed in a warehouse. Uh, you can then use Crop Connect to complete transfers to contract, cash, um, your pools, and you can put in your offers, you can view your invoices and manage all your, your notifications. Um, I would also suggest that you check your personal details with NGR prior to harvest and complete the canola sustainability declaration form if you wish. Over to you, Is. Perfect. Thanks, Craig. And now I'll just go around the grounds for a couple of final thoughts from the team. But before I go, we'll answer a question here that we've come in from Jenny. So Jenny wants to know, will communications improve this year? Will text go out with opening, closing, and particularly any changes in times? I might throw this one across to Harry. Thanks, Is. The answer is yes. Uh, text will go out with opening and closing times. And there will be additional text if these change. So it's a pretty simple answer. Yes, it will be. Perfect. Thanks, Harry, and thanks again, Jenny, for that question. I'll throw across, across to Woz for your final final thoughts, if you've got any there. All good. No, thanks, Izzy. Just, yeah, firstly, wishing, you know, all the growers uh, a very safe and successful harvest, really. It's, um, yeah, we've been waiting a couple of years uh, for, for a good one to come along, some areas even longer than that. So very pleased to see the crop progressing how it is and, yeah, certainly wish everyone the very best. Just, I suppose, my you know, key takeaway for the, to the growers is, you know, just make yourself known to our local site managers. Um, if there are, you know, things you need to know, uh, please, you know, be in contact with them. The, the best way we can support you is if uh, we, we have a better understanding of what you need from us and, and how you're tracking with your harvest as well, so we can certainly support you there. Um, we've got a few new site managers, as you might have seen at the start, so we'll be sending out some details via email and obviously via text message with um, contact details for our new site managers and, and existing site managers, so obviously you can update um, your, your own uh, so you know who to be talking to and things like that. Um, but, yeah, all in all, just have a very, very safe harvest and uh, look forward to seeing a lot of you uh, in the next few weeks when harvest kicks off. I'll get out and about. Thanks, Izzy. Perfect. Just keep your eyes out for those um, communications that are coming out just so you do know who to, um, who to speak to when the time arises. I'll throw across to Gary. Yeah, thanks, Izzy. Yeah, I'd like to wish everyone a safe harvest as well. Uh, if there's anyone needs to... In contact, opening hours or anything, don't hesitate to ring me day or night. And just um, if we could, just give you a couple of days' notice before you think you'll be ready for heart, um, your samples or site opening. Uh, we could only open if we know what the growers are doing. So if we could have a couple of days or a day's notice, it would be great. Perfect. Thanks, Gary. Have you got anything you want to add as well, Harry? Thanks, Is. Uh, just like everyone else, wishing everyone a safe and successful harvest. And following on from Jenny's question, just we have several forms of communication that we send out, uh, pricing SMSs, uh, daily bid sheet emails, uh, weekly sort of newsletter communication, and also 
as Jenny mentioned, the ops SMSs. So if you're not on, on these or any of them, please give us a call and we can put you on those lists. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. And last but not least, I'll throw across to Craig. Thank you, Iz. Look, I'm really excited. Um, it's great to see the crop in the area looking so great um, and the potential of it is awesome um, and we just need to get that executed. We think that we've planned really, really well to execute it uh, efficiently and safely and hopefully COVID safe. Um, so, look, all I can say is uh, yeah, all the best and wish you a safe and prosperous harvest and uh, hopefully we'll see you out and about. Perfect. Thanks, Craig. Now that concludes our webinar for this morning. Hopefully that's given you an insight into what's happening this season at Harvest at, at Grain Corp to ensure that you, our community and our staff remain safe. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. The best way to do that is on the 1800 Grains number and we'll um, endeavour to answer your question or the team there will put you through to the appropriate party. Thanks again for your time this morning and I wish you all the very best for this coming Harvest.